Hi, and welcome to this crash course on database proxies. This is going to be mostly an introduction and or overview of uh, database proxies, what they are good for, how they work, uh, etc. Uh, so my name is Alejandro Duarte, and I'm a software engineer. I published these three books about uh, web development with Java, and I work in developer relations um, at MariaDB. So we are going to use these three things, Java, just a tiny bit, you don't even need to know Java. Actually, it's only because I need to show the connection string. I just want to show that. So it's not even Java code at all. Uh, we're going to use MariaDB, which is my, obviously my favorite database, uh, and something called MaxScale. First, we're going to see what is a database proxy and the elements and the architecture and so forth. We're going to see how to scale specifically reads. And then we're going to see other use cases. And finally, we're going to see disadvantages and advantages so that you can make an informed decision on whether to use a database proxy or not. So first, what is a proxy? More general, right? A proxy, what is it? So when you have a client that needs to communicate to a server, a proxy is something that sits between these two guys. And it's, it's there in a way that the client totally thinks it is actually talking to the server and the server thinks it's actually replying to the client. So they don't know that there is a proxy in the middle handling this communication. The proxy just sends the, the uh, request from the client, forwards it to the server. Then when the server kind of uh, response, uh, the, generates a response, then it sends that response back to the client. Now, if the proxy is on the, let's say the, um, local network of the client, it's usually called forward proxy. And if it's located in the local network of the server, it's called reverse proxy. These, the reverse proxies, they have the advantage that they can add functionality without having to modify the client. They can add things, for example, to increase high availability, scalability, do integrations with other systems, increase security or, or put mechanisms that, that that improve security. Now, what is a database proxy more specifically? So it's kind of the same. It's just that now we have, for example, a web server or a web application or a mobile application, desktop application, a device in, on the edge, whatever, that it's going to communicate to a database. So a proxy and the database proxy sits in the middle again. We are using MaxScale here, which is a proxy, a database proxy that understands SQL or SQL. And because it, understand, it, it understands SQL, that's the reason we call it intelligent, because it can make decisions based on that code that you send uh, through the proxy. So it knows, for example, if a um, SQL sentence is a uh, select, or maybe it's an update or something different. So this is uh, an intelligent database proxy. Now, as with any other kind of proxy, it it can add functionality to this system in terms of high availability, scalability, integrations, and security. And we are going to see uh, concrete examples of all these four categories, right? So let's explore some of the concepts and the architecture of a database proxy. And for that, we're going to use MaxScale as an example. So you have a client, again, it could be a web server, web application, mobile application, uh, desktop application, whatever and it needs to consume a database. And the database is actually a cluster. There are multiple machines there, multiple nodes, multiple instances of the database running, okay? Now, to simplify everything, we introduce a database proxy, and MaxScale has one component there called the core. And the core maintains and stores, or actually stores the, the cluster state and makes it available to other components in the in, inside the database proxy. There is another component called the monitor, which monitors the database cluster, all the machines there, and updates that cluster state so that now the, the proxy knows whether, like how many servers are there, uh, which ones are in maintenance mode maybe, or which ones just failed, and this kind of stuff is stored there inside this database proxy. Now, when the client needs to connect to the database, like a web application, it does it through a protocol, a wire protocol. It could be MariaDB, for example. Uh, there are others. We're going to see examples of that later. Uh, but let's say it's MariaDB, and the, port, the, the protocol has a port, a number, just like if it was a database. 
In other words, the client totally thinks it's talking to one database and that's it. Has no idea what's going on, which is a, a desirable thing. It simplifies the, the perspective the application has and hence the developer doesn't need to worry about it. Now, this request is sent to a number of filters. It could be zero filters, no filters whatsoever. It could be one, two filters, like in this example, three, 10, whatever. And these filters modify these requests through a parser. And then later they could even modify the, uh, the reply, uh, the response when the data is flowing in the opposite direction back to the client. After the filters, this is sent to a router, which uses this cluster state that is available there through the monitor or the core component rather is updated by the monitor, but it's available in the core component here to decide this router decides where to send this request using again, a protocol. So which node in this cluster, which machine, which actual uh, database instance should I send this, this uh, query, for example, if it's a query. Now the gray and the green rectangles or boxes here, they are configurable parameters, kind of. They're objects that you can configure in max scale. So all those things you can you can adjust, you can, you know, set a bunch of things on 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 these things. So let's see the configuration, how you configure a database proxy. In the case of max scale, you have configuration files.cnf. And for some of the things that you have to use JSON, but we are not gonna go through that. Uh, here's an example. So I have a configuration file and pay attention to these two sections here first. We are defining nodes, nodes one and two. They are servers. It says type equals server address. The first one is 10.0.0.2. The port is 3306, which is the default for a MariaDB database. And the protocol is actually a MariaDB backend. So it's, uh, uh, it seems that this is a MariaDB database. Uh, living at 10.0.0.2, same with node 2. So we're defining two servers. You can define more things, but this is just a quick example. You can do the same using the command line through a tool called max control. And if you look at this section over here, you see that we are creating the same nodes, node one and two, and a third one with their IP addresses, but we are also creating or defining a monitor, right? We're creating the monitor. Remember the monitor from the architecture? It is the one that monitors the cluster and updates the state. There is, we're saying you, we could create many of those monitors. Now we're creating one, we give it a name and we're saying, hey, please monitor node one, two and three. Same here in this section, we're creating something called a service, which I actually didn't put in the architecture diagram, but you see uh, that there is something that says reads, read, write, split. You see that term there, we're gonna see that in action or an example of what, what it means. We're configuring this to do read, read, write splitting. We're gonna see it later. Uh, through servers, node one, two, and three. So a service makes a cluster, in this case, three nodes, look like if it was only one to an application. That was the command line. Now you have also a REST service. That's pretty cool. So I have a, some JSON object here and it seems I'm just adding now node node four with the IP address 10.0.0.1 and the port 3306 also. Then we invoke that. Here it seems that we are using curl to, you know, to invoke the REST service from the command line, but you can invoke these from um, your application. You can develop application and call a, a REST service just like you would do uh, with many other things, right? Um, so that means that you can uh, maybe automate things or make things available for configuration. And there's also, it's super cool, a web graphical user interfaces interface, right? So you go to the browser, you log in to this GUI, and then you have a dashboard with all the servers. Now here I have MariaDB 1, 2, and 3 in that, in that um, dashboard, which is like node 1, 2, 3, so it's just different, but, but you get the idea, right? It's just the servers, the actual servers. And we have the monitor, we have services, listeners, filters, everything is there. You can see sessions, connections, the load, a bunch of things. Um, you can also create, it's not only for visualization, you can create, you can configure max scale. So you can create a server and you can see that you can create the other things too, services, monitor, listener, filter. Mm. 
just like we did in the command line then in the or in the configuration file command line rest service you can do it now with the you can do it also with the gui just clicking things here and filling the form so it could be even you know could be less error prone for cert certain things up to you you can visualize the the cluster the topology so you see okay we have two listeners there so i can connect to this cluster through two different endpoints two different ports it seems we'll see later what is that all about there is a service so it, the three mariadb servers look like only one there is a monitor down there taking care of updating the state of the of the cluster so you can visualize this it's very useful but you can also run sql um, using max scale um, it's like um, a sql client in, in that it's um, available right there for you and you can connect to a particular specific server in the topology one one instance or you can do it through the listener right so that you test the whole thing for example um, and there is a functionality to see all the tables schemas and filter data and order etc